Do you want resurrection power in your thinking? Well, I certainly do, and Lent is a good time to think about the areas of our thought lives that are not actually dedicated to uh, Christ. So that's what we're going to be talking about today on the Tea on Tuesdays devotional. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been with me for a while, thanks for opening and watching this today. And I just want to remind you that I will share links in the comments of the video here. And if you get anything out of this video today that's good, would you like it or comment on it or share it? Because that will help more people get access to it. So I learned about this uh, resurrection thinking this week when I took my daughter to confirmation class. So she's 12 and the girls in her class range between 12 and probably 14 years old. So after an evening event, I picked her up and she told me how it went and she said, Mom, I bet I heard 25 times uh, girls at my table saying, oh, I look so ratchet today to each other. And I kind of was surprised by that because when I hear the term ratchet, I think of Nurse Ratchet in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest movie from the 1970s. And she might still be one of the most evil, vile characters that Hollywood has ever created. And so I knew that my daughter didn't know who that was. And I said, so what do you mean when you all use that term with each other? And she said, we mean that you look ratty or sloppy. I said, okay, okay. And I said, so what, what, if a girl says that, what is she trying to get from it, from someone else? And she said, well, she's looking for a compliment so she can feel better about herself if she's not feeling confident in how she looks. And so I paused and I thought about that for a while and it kind of took me back to my junior high days I am uh, releasing a book this fall for teen girls, uh, ages 13 to 16. So I'm kind of on the prowl for these kind of stories. And I kind of remember that phase of being uh, insecure, you know, and I think most of us are in junior high. And uh, I remember not fishing for compliments, but being the one who gave compliments because I was too insecure really to even share my insecurities with other people. I just hid them inside. And it made me think about how now uh, I'm in my 40s and I still hide some of those things inside. I still struggle with those thoughts of I'm not enough or I'm too much. And I know that I still seek validation or uh, affirmation in people, in places and things that I really shouldn't be looking for it in, and I should be looking uh, in God's word and in my prayer time with him because really that's the only place that I have found that fulfillment and affirmation that never leaves me like uh, some uh, junior high girls compliment might only last a little while to make me feel better at age 12. And then, you know, I'm back to feeling insecure. So if you have uh, listened to or watched my podcast before, you have heard me uh, talk about Dr. Henry Cloud's books and his videos that I like to watch Monday through Friday. And I just caught uh, one he made a few, um, a few days ago. And this is a concept that he's brought up a couple times that I think ties into this uh, discussion for us adult ladies that still struggle with insecurity inside. And he said that there's a common uh, cognitive process or a belief system that people have when bad things happen to them. And he calls it the three P's, okay? So the first P is that we make it personal. So something bad happens to us and we think, I'm not good enough. It's because I'm not good enough that this thing happened to me. So we personalize it. And then the second P is it's pervasive. It means that you start seeing your whole world as bad, your whole uh, workplace as bad, or your whole family as bad, or your whole church as bad, depending on the situation. Uh, you, you make 
it into like a black and white thinking problem. And then the third P is permanent that you say, you know, this isn't going to change. This is never going to be any different. So I'm not going to try anymore. I'm not going to put forth any effort. So the three P's, personal, pervasive, and permanent can make us feel powerless. And that's what keeps us stuck in like a, a down position and really unable to live the abundant life that God calls us to live. So how do we overcome that kind of thinking? Well, as you know, I talk a lot about Christian meditation and using God's word to replace those lies that we're believing with the truth. So we think about that, we say it, we write it out, uh, we display it somewhere so that we can start transforming our thoughts through the power of his word. And so I want to read two key scriptures that can help us choose resurrection-powered thinking. So one is Galatians 2.20. This is a great verse to memorize, uh, and I'm reading out of the ESV version for this. Uh, Paul writes, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So, you know, instead of saying, oh, I'm so ratchet, you can say, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but he's living in me. His power can help me take the next step. His life can help me choose the abundant life. His strength can keep me moving forward. And he's doing this because he loved me and gave himself up for me. That is the affirmation that we need that never changes. It doesn't depend on our life circumstances. It doesn't depend on people. It doesn't depend on finances or um, health, really. We can always stand by Galatians 2.20 to have that resurrected uh, thinking. And then another uh, passage that I really like is in 2 Corinthians. I like the um, New Living Translation. Let me get this in front of me here. And I'm going to start at uh, verse 14 and lead up to my favorite verse in this series. So again, Paul writes, Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. There's a lot of overlap between these two passages, don't you think? So continuing on to verse 16. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view how differently we know him now. And here's, here's the best verse, I think, verse 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. Now, I learned that in the NIV, which says a new creation. And we always thought of the picture of a butterfly emerging from a chrysalis, and I think that's kind of a common symbol in this uh, period of Lent and Easter of an old life transformed from a caterpillar into a butterfly, and then you just leave that chrysalis behind. And just going back to verse 16, when Paul says, so we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view, I think in this discussion today, um, we need to stop evaluating ourselves uh, from a human point of view as well. So we need to see ourselves as crucified with Christ and a new creation rather than ratchet or ratty or sloppy or whatever negative word you want to throw in there. And I think this is how we can overcome those three P's as well. That if we're looking at things uh, from God's point of view, 
that we're a new person, that our old life is gone and a new life has begun, then we're not going to be held back by the three Ps. We're not going to personalize everything that happens to us. We're not going to think that it's pervasive over our entire world and, and therefore defeating to us. And we're not going to think that it's permanent because both of these passages certainly show us that no matter how dead we feel, no matter how lost we are, that God can resurrect us and give us new life through his power. Now, I don't know which area of your thinking needs that reformation, needs that new life, but I ask you to pray about it in the coming days. Pray about the areas that, that are just too dependent on others' opinions. Uh, the areas where you are stuck in old patterns, maybe of your dysfunctional family, or maybe you're thinking like the person you were when you were um, overweight and now you're not. Um, maybe you're thinking that you can get back to something that's just not possible and you need to go through a grieving process to let go of that. There's all kinds of situations where this can apply. So I'm just asking you, as you're processing this information, pray and ask God where he wants you to apply Galatians 2.20 and 2 Corinthians 5.17 to have resurrection power in your thought life. And um, Jesus himself, he calls himself, I am the resurrection and the life. That's one of his I am statements in the book of John. So anytime that you need resurrection power in your thinking, you can pray to the one who is the resurrection and who is the new life and ask him to give you those things. He's ready and willing to do that for you right now and tomorrow and the week ahead, this entire Lenten season, he's willing and ready for you to come to him for that resurrection power in your thinking. So I pray that this has blessed you today. Again, I'll share some links in the comments below, especially uh, these Bible verses so that you can go and read them in context and pray over them, meditate on them further. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to this time with you every week. And if you have any prayer requests or feedback, then just look for the contact information in the comments below. God's blessings and peace to you until next week. Bye-bye.